podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Love and Compassion Podcast with Giselle Tareba. If you're listening on an audio podcast, don't forget to write a review. And if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Our guest today is the founder and chief fun officer of The Playful Warrior, a brand that reconnects adults back to their inherent nature and playfulness. She is also a play and mindset coach and the creator of Thought Play. Thought Play is an innovative eight-week play journey that transforms your subconscious mind and uses the power of uninhibited creativity to cultivate self-worth and create a life that excites you. It features the play book and the play box delivered right to your door. Kara is also a speaker and certified life and success coach, an LP practitioner, hypnotherapist, time technique, and EFT tapping practitioner. Please join me in welcoming Carol Latta. Hi, Kara. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited to talk about the topic of play. It's very, it's something we don't often do, but it's something that um, definitely bringing more joy into our lives is something we all very much need. I was just wondering if you could start a little bit about sharing how you got into play and how you like what, how your journey led you here. Yeah, I would love to. So I worked in the corporate world for almost 10 years. And there was something always off for me. Like I felt disconnected. I felt stuck. I did very well in my job and got a lot of accomplishments, but I never felt fulfilled ever. And I just kind of knew like, this isn't what I'm supposed to do, but I had no idea, no clarity as to what else I could do. So I guess just over a year ago now, hard to believe it's 2021, but uh, I was in my corporate job and a lot started happening. So I was having this really bad cockroach infestation in my apartment for like months. And if anyone knows, cockroaches are actually a powerful spiritual symbol for like darkness and needing to clean up your shadows. So I was going in therapy as well. I was doing all this uncovering of childhood trauma. I was in a relationship that ended as well. And things in my job just weren't going well. A lot was happening at one time. Some might call that, you know, like a spiritual crisis And yeah, I just felt very disconnected from myself and I knew things had to change in my life. But again, I didn't have much clarity as to how, and then COVID happened right away. I lost my job the very like few days because I actually worked on a lot of like travel companies. So there wasn't much happening in travel. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So I lost my job and I had already kind of started in therapy doing inner child healing. So reconnecting with the little me who had a lot of abandonment wounds from childhood. And so this was like a very heavy process, but then someone had suggested like, oh, try adding like play into your life. But the thing is there was no suggestions of how to play. Um, And I was like talking to some other people, like, do you play? And everyone was just like, no. And like in the corporate world, everyone was so disconnected from play. Like, especially I worked in an agency environment. Like there was like not no play happening there. I was kind of like, how do I play? So I started reconnecting with little me and I started trying to do one playful thing a day. And I noticed that just like my energy changed. I was feeling so much better. I started being more creative. I was starting to have like business ideas. It was so exciting because I had never actually thought of myself as being an entrepreneur. So my life just really started shifting. The energetic started shifting and I felt much more connected to myself and I felt a lot more self-love. And so I started like getting this really strong calling that like, wow, I think my mission is to bring play to the world, uh, which was really exciting Mm -hmm. and so surprising for me too, because this wasn't like a plan I had. Um, So yeah, and I was looking around and adults didn't know how to play. You know, people thought it was a good idea, um, but people just like didn't know how to connect back to that due to our conditioning, right? And the fact that we learned that play is immature or childish or only for kids. So for me, I got really fascinated because I saw all these results in my own life. So I started studying play and the benefits of it. And there was so much backed by science, but we just aren't taught that. So I really became passionate about it, knew that I had this mission, but at the same time had some like mental blocks coming up because entrepreneurship was very new for me. And I just, you know, had some like self-doubt coming up. Like this is kind of crazy leaving the corporate world to like start this play business. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And so definitely I had people in my life who were not a fan of that and who Mm -hmm. thought it was crazy. So because of these mindset blocks, all the fear coming up, all the self-doubt, that was when I started realizing that mindset was so important as an entrepreneur. 
So I decided to invest in a program and get certified in hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, time techniques. So I could really solidify my mindset, become more confident and reprogram my subconscious mind because I learned that 95% of what we do is actually driven by our subconscious mind. And so I was trying to make a lot of changes at the conscious level, but by doing yeah. subconscious work, mm -hmm. it was so powerful. So then I was kind of here, I was in this spot between, okay, play is so powerful but subconscious mindset is so powerful as well. So I need to combine these together and create a business out of this, which is kind of how I formed this play and mindset coaching business. And that was where I created thought play my program as well. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, I like to say that it actually kind of came from a dark time and it really just came from me trusting myself because if I were to look to the external world to like validate my idea there were no other play coaches like this wasn't happening so it really like depended on my love for my inner child and you know my compassion and my self-trust so it was a beautiful journey but it was definitely very scary at first yeah. And most journeys, especially the hero's journey, tend to be very scary. I love your story. I mean, I love how you're able to take the adversity and turn it into something that is so needed right now in the world. And it's so funny because when I learned about your your program, you know, I got so excited. And at the same time, I was thinking about all of those messages I've received about playing. And so I'm um, just wondering if you could share some of that, some of the barriers that your clients have um, encountered and yourself as well in your journey. Yeah, I think the biggest one is time. People thinking they don't have time for play. Oh, um, people cool. thinking that they have, you know, they they have this long to-do list, which is like fair, you know, you do have a lot to do. And it's like, I have to do my work. I have to take care of my kids. I have to go do the groceries. I have to pay my rent, but like all these things that you have to do. And so it's just like play ends up being the last thing on your list. It's kind of like this nice to have. People don't think of play as like a burning problem. They usually think of it as like this nice to have, like I'll do that if I have time, maybe I'll have like half an hour, an hour in my day. And so mm. for me, I'm like, this actually is a burning problem because by not playing, we are not connected to ourselves. We are not fulfilled. We are not finding that joy. And life is so short. We, yeah. we deserve to connect with that joy. Like what else is the point really? And by playing, the amazing part is that you're actually becoming much more efficient and so much more productive as well. You will actually do the items on your to-do list faster and you'll be, you're enhancing your brain. You're firing up your brain. You're enhancing your memory, your focus. So it's all these things that it's like, really, I'm just educating people and advocating for it because the science is there. It's just, we weren't taught this. So it's like play needs to be much higher on your priority list. I think another big one though, is that people don't think they're creative. So a lot of the time when we are younger, you know, someone might've been like, you're maybe you're in your grade one and you're like drawing or something. And your teacher maybe gave you like a little comment. And so oh, because as mm -hmm. kids, we think in all or nothing. Right. Yeah. And so if our teacher told us we needed to like redo a picture or something or that it was like I was inside the lines. Exactly. <laughs> I totally had that as well. Like I couldn't really write inside the lines. And that was kind mm -hmm. of traumatizing for me. They had comments about that. So in all or nothing, you're like, oh, well, I'm never going to draw again. Or like, oh, I just can't do art or I'm not creative or all these things because we associate because of our conditioning creativity with being good at something right? Like we don't think we can do art unless we're good at it. Whereas as kids, we just want to do stuff because it feels good. We don't care what it looks yeah. like. We're just so in the moment. We're just like dancing, like feeling good. But as adults, it's like, oh, let me look in the mirror and see how I look when I'm dancing. And like, if I don't like it, then like, I don't want to pursue that because it's all about how it looks externally. And we want, we learn, we want to like achieve and we want to please, and we want to have this outcome which is why with play, my favorite thing is that it's not competitive and there's no outcome. It's like liberating yourself to do something without having to achieve or like get this outcome, which is so, so cool. And I like to tell everyone is creative. So that's what we have. You know, we have some stuff to unpack with that. It's just with creativity. It's really just thinking with a different perspective, mm -hmm. which we all do every day. Like maybe even in the kitchen, you're doing that with your outfit. You're trying something new. Maybe you're trying like a new lipstick, whatever. There's like yeah. so many ways we think differently. So we're all so creative. So the idea of like uninhibited creativity for me is just like exploring, being in this state of curiosity. And yeah, like that's really it. It's not that complicated. It's just so complicated for people in our minds because we have been taught other messages. 
Yeah, definitely. You know, I was thinking as you were talking about the messages that we receive from adults about children's creativities and how they're judged, right? They're judged by these adult standards and these expectations when really, it really is about just creative expression and there is no right or wrong way to creatively express yourself. I was also thinking about, you know, in one of my questions for you is around one of the things I've observed when we play as a family and even with you know, kind of our other families as well, is the, the need for competition, how people tend to judge themselves when they're playing if they don't win. And so in, to me, that kind of reinforces that negative perspective of ourselves as not good enough. Um, what strategies do you use to help people kind of move away from that needing that external validation to focusing on really just the joy of the moment? Yes, that is, that is like one of my biggest priorities and is so important. And yeah, because some people will be like, they'll question like, is this what I'm doing? Is this actually play? And it's like, yeah, if you're so focused on the outcome and if you're not, if you're not winning a game and then you like hated that experience, then that's not actually play. So to get people like more comfortable with open and honest self-expression and just like giving themselves that permission, I actually recommend getting like a blindfold because when we have a blindfold that takes away the critical factor of our conscious mind and like, yeah. And try yeah. like doing art or something, right? Like for me personally, I am like not an artist by societal standards. So that was just never something I explored because I'm like, oh, well, I'm not good at it. So it's not going to be fun, yeah. but it's like, art is really cool. Cause you're just like getting some paint. You're like expressing yourself or, you know, paint crayons, whatever. And you're just like expressing yourself on paper and seeing what happens. So when I started exploring it, I just got a blindfold it was really fun because it was just like so uninhibited, just like trying even with my non-dominant hand, seeing what comes on paper. And it was really cool because it's not like I was trying to create something that looked good. It was just really fun. And it was like, wow, I'm actually giving myself permission to do this thing that I kind of took away from myself because of messages I got when I was younger. So that's really fun. I, I always recommend just like doodling with a blindfold, maybe even like moving with a blindfold or just closing your eyes because with the blindfold too, it really heightens your senses. We really want to tap into all of our senses while we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so great. I, I would have never thought about using a blindfold. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about other tools that you use in order to help people become more of their authentic inner child? Yeah. So, I mean, I do that as well with like the play box and playbook that I send out with my program. Mm -hmm. The idea of the play box again, is that because play is so sensory, it's fun to have things to like touch and taste and smell and like really get into your body because often when we're too much in our mind, it's too hard to do that. We, you know, we get connected to that perfectionist in us or just like the logical left brain. And we really want to go into our creative brain and try these things. So by doing these things and like touching and tasting, is so important. Another thing that's really key though, is doing things that are spontaneous. When we try to plan our play too much, we start preparing for it in our head. And then it's not actually like, we won't connect to that childlike wonder because you're like, okay, here's how I'm going to play. And like, here's how I do this, like choreography or whatever it is, which is why I actually keep everything in my program a surprise until the moment, because that way everyone is like really in the state of curiosity and they're connecting to their childlike wonder, which is such a beautiful, amazing experience. So I would say, try not to plan your play, try to make it spontaneous. Even if you're going on a walk, like try once in a while to not plan where you're walking and just be like really exploratory and see like wherever the wind takes you, like follow your senses and see where you want to go. Like that's something fun you can do. I mean, like I know COVID right now and restrictions, um, are difficult depending where you are. But like, if you can safely do like a distance walk where there's not a lot of people, that's something I recommend too. Like there's really ways we can add play to our everyday that we just like don't think of. But yeah, you can always like think of even problems more playfully if something's coming up in your life, coming up with a few like playful solutions, like getting yourself to laugh about something and really like breaking that state of like, you know, whatever, like this negativity, it can be really fun. Another thing I love doing is a shaking meditation. It's so good. Um, Can you describe? Yeah, of course. So essentially I just do one that's like two minutes and I go in my body and I shake like through my hips and I go up to my chest and I go up to my eyes and my head and I'm just like shaking out. I think about anything that's not serving me, anything that is stressing me out. I let it go. I get into my body. Again, I'm breaking state. I'm like feeling so much more energized and refueled. 
And that way, then I can continue on with my day being more productive, but I kind of gave myself that moment to get inside my body. So it's really beautiful. And that's like another thing that I always love. I actually, that's the first thing I do with my clients in every session, just so they can like let go of their day and like really come into our session and be present and connect to their inner child. But yeah, there, there's so many ways. That reminds me of that Taylor Swift, like song shake. Yes, <laughs> it's, yes. it's like you're I, shaking your day away. I think it's such a great way to get people out of their, yes. their usual, because we tend to get into routines and everything's about habitus, right? And so you're kind of getting them out of that current yes. state. So I, I really love that. I was wondering if you could share a little bit about other outcomes you have seen, maybe surprising outcomes, because I know you mentioned creativity is one of them and people kind of focusing, uh, you know, getting in touch with their inner self. Were there any outcomes that you were surprised at in terms of when you've done some of this work? Yeah, I would say there is a few. Honestly, if I'm being totally honest, the one that's been the most surprising is just how emotional it can be for some people, especially some moms who they play for their kids. They don't play for themselves. And they've actually had the experience of just like crying, like happy tears, but not knowing that they could connect back to play at this age and have fun for themselves. It was something they just kind of sworn off or just like didn't expect. So it's like this really unexpected emotion will come up when they can experience that again for themselves. And it's like the most beautiful experience. And they just start feeling more connected to themselves and their daily life. And there's just this new sense of excitement which is amazing because then inevitably the kids will learn from, you know, their mom who is doing this and inevitably the kids will learn to play more as well, which is so beautiful. It's kind of that like domino effect that happens, but that has been like the most surprising to be honest. I just, I didn't know play would, could be so like emotional in the most beautiful way. Yeah. And like, I, when I think about like other surprising things, like the creativity for sure, but just like problem solving skills as well. Like my clients having more problem solving skills, having more solutions readily available to them and more adaptability when things are coming up in their life. I actually had one client who was, has her own like side business right now. She's doing a full-time business and she was going to start doing her side business full-time in a year from now, December, 2021. And she's now just been so connected to her creativity that she's now starting in March. She's like ready to leave her job. She has all these new ideas. Um, so it's so cool to see play like working in action and just, yeah, it's like that deep connection to self, that deep joy, really improving your mental health as well, but also like actionable items happening in your life that, yeah, it's just like, I'm, I'm so grateful to see it happening. Yeah. Wow. Can we go back to the comment you made about the moms? I mean, I, like even you, you mentioning it, it just kind of opened up my heart because it made me like connect to the fact that sometimes some of us have become so disconnected from our inner child and from that childlike wonder that to be able to reconnect with that again and to just say, oh, there you are, <laughs> you know, because as moms, sometimes we put that aside. We have to be there for our families. We have to be there for our kids. And when you said we don't play for ourselves, we play for our kids. I think that's so that's so important because con connecting with our kids, it is playing for ourselves and playing with them rather than playing for them. So I thought that was really, really critical. I thought that was so, wow. I yeah. By that. No, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. It, it's so beautiful to see. And you would think that, you know, moms would be, you know, like it, it's amazing how we kind of get into this role. And it's again, that sense of responsibility where we feel you know, th there's like a wrongness in play. It's, it's like indulgent and lax and so on. And it's about kind of overcoming some of those, some of those barriers. I was also thinking about business, right. And how you came from the business world. And also now you're doing play. And it's so funny because when you work in that kind of environment, it, it really is about very rule focused, it's very structured, it's very serious. And I was wondering whether or not you've had an opportunity to kind of bring play into the business world in or how that could look like? Yeah, I love that question. So actually I just started doing that in December. So I'm now working with corporate teams as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I've done two so far and I'm going to be continuing that this year, which I'm really excited about mm -hmm. as corporate teams, like, especially right now with COVID, it's very hard to connect with your team when you're doing it on zoom. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted a way to bring teams closer together find that connection, like boost corporate morale and yeah, like help teams, like you said, not be so rigid 
find a way to make work more fun. Like it's what you do with most of your time. Right. Yeah. And this life thing is so short. So I'm so excited about working with the corporate teams. I think it's so needed. And yeah, it's been really beautiful. Like see people coming closer together, trying things they haven't tried before. And yeah, I'm excited to see how that will continue to evolve. Yeah. Are the barriers encountered from those, from the business teams, very similar to the ones that you've had from one-on-one clients or on their perceptions of play? Yeah. I mean, I will say it's a bit different what I do with like my one-on-one versus the corporate, but I can also say that like some of the corporate people like aren't ready for this yet. Right. Which is like (laughs) totally fine. Like, uh, like it depends kind of who you're talking with. Like some people are really excited about it and some people are just like not ready for it right now. It's a bit too it's, I guess, maybe a bit too unconventional for them, or it's just so different than what they've experienced, which is fine. But yeah, I think, I think the same barriers are very much that, especially in the corporate world, just like that disconnect from play, disconnect from self. A lot of people feel like, you know, they wear this like mask at work where they can't truly be themselves. At least that's how I felt as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like nice to have those moments where you can like connect to self-expression at work and find these like pockets of happiness. So, yeah, but I would say like overall, like very similar. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about like, you know, be yourself. No, not like that. Right. And so <laughs> there, there is a level of, you know, people, are, there's a level of expectation for you to align and to fit into a box. And so it's amazing to hear that there are businesses out there that are willing to kind of, you know, think more creatively, think more. And, you know, and when I think of the big innovators like Google and so on, they do kind of incorporate that kind of more create creative thinking. But I think, like you said, it can be incorporated anywhere in, in any way, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for those that are interested in, you know, becoming playful warriors, what can they expect from your program? They can expect a lot of fun, a lot of like self-discovery, learning new things about yourself and what you like, learning to give yourself permission to authentically express yourself without worrying about what it looks like. And yeah, just like this chance for like also just like deep radical connection with yourself and taking time for self-care, improve health, improve creativity, more adaptability, um, but also powerful subconscious mindset shifts. So if you sign on for my thought play program, my mm-hmm. sessions are actually half play, but half subconscious reprogramming. Mm-hmm. And also I do have an outline for the eight weeks, but I am a very flexible, adaptable person. So intuitively yeah. I kind of do what's best for the person. So for example, like in my week seven, I plan to do hypnosis, but if I'm like in week three, someone's needing it, like we'll do a hypnosis then. So it kind of is like very intuitive and I very much customize the program for you. But yeah, the subconscious reprogramming is so amazing. So we can reprogram your subconscious to get your thoughts, actions, behaviors, really just working for you and moving you yeah. towards the vision. And we will set up goals and we do coaching as well to really make sure that you are moving towards this life that excites you and I will keep you accountable. And the cool part is, is that we get to have fun while doing it. Yeah, which is so important. I mean, even like when you think about a a therapeutic intervention, I think people have the usual traditional sit on the couch, you know, talk about my problems. (laughs) You tell me what you think about my problems. Whereas I think in these kinds of formats, you enable things to just kind of come out or, you know, be released as they come up and you it's, it's, you know, much more free, much more joyful, much more kind of intuitive, I think. So I do think it's kind of a great marriage between kind of that counseling and supportive piece and the whole joy and creativity, which I think enables people to, one of the things, so I'm a, I've done certification in compassion training. And one of the things that they talk about is the importance of titration, which is the importance of being able to, you know, when things get really too challenging to be able to kind of come back to yourself and be able to give yourself a hug. And I see how the joy piece, the playful piece enables you to titrate. So if it's if too much emotion is coming up, you can just go to your, to your play, right? You can just go and use those tools to kind of, you know, titrate, I think. So I love that. I that's Yeah, I think that's really great. Thank you. So you had already mentioned some things, but I was just wondering if you had any other tidbits for our listeners around how they can start to incorporate more play in their life. I have a fun one. So I would say this is a very sensory experience. It is getting an orange and eating it in the shower. So wow, why? (laughs) Now you're getting my, you're getting my, my responsible critical sign. I'm like, okay, I got to clean that up. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, will I get that on myself? <laughs> I don't want to say too much about it because I really, again, I want you to experience that without too many expectations or okay. like what's going to happen. But I I'm going to just- try it. So what do you do? You just, so you run the showers if you're showering and then you just eat the orange? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. Try that. All I will say is it's like very fun and very sensory. Okay. I'm going to actually so- really try it. <laughs> Can we? So yeah. So before before you go would it be possible to kind of do the shake with our audience to just kind of get them started on the yeah. right path after yeah uh, but yeah. before we do that I'm just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what's coming up for you like what do you have any specials coming up I know you had talked about the Valentine's Day yeah yeah so for Valentine's Day I'm really excited for me I like to call Valentine's Day love day and it is for anyone who just wants to celebrate any kind of love So I have three specials going on, which I'm super excited for. So I have a couple's creative play experience, which is really amazing. It is a chance for you to reconnect with your partner, ignite that sense of like wander and intimacy. So it's a 60 minute session. I'm also doing one for best friends as well, because it's so important that we celebrate our friendships too. And I'm doing one too, where you can do a solo play date and you can take your inner child on a date because I truly believe the most important relationship we have is with ourselves because our relationship with ourselves reflects out into all of our other relationships. So there's three specials for that. I'm also doing a family day special. So in Ontario, that is February 15th. So if you want to do a play session with your family, I can also do that. This is all done via zoom. So it's super safe and it's just a fun way to find connection on zoom and like switch things up and try things you haven't done before. Yeah. Oh my God. Those all sound so amazing. Yeah. Um, and thank you for mentioning yourself as the most important relationship. It did said it did kind of make me think about a question regarding how play could help you connect to your inner self-love. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think, I think for me, it's like really just like my inner child connection and connecting back to this little girl who was so inherently playful and just like yeah, just like this, like burst of light and like had so much excitement for life every day. And so what I do actually is I have little photos of me around my place to reconnect me with that. So like with my bathroom cabinet, I have it behind. So every time I open it, I see like little Kara looking at me and just like smiling. So that just like reconnects me back to like this sense of like self-love and like so much love for her. And then I'm like showing up for her now. And, you know, I had abandoned her for a long time, like looking for all this external validation. And it's now time that I'm showing up and I'm giving her my own validation. You know, I did that like reparenting towards her. So I think when I'm playing, I'm just showing up for her and just like, yeah, just tapping into so much love and doing these things I love to do that previously I didn't because I listened to the external world. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so interesting. What a gift to be laid off. (laughs) What a gift to have roaches in your, you know, and sometimes when I look at what's happening in the world, and I think to myself, you know, where's the opportunity for us to be better. And had you not had these struggles, the world wouldn't have been introduced to the playful warriors who are helping us connect to our inner self. So sometimes these things that we find the most challenging are our biggest gifts, even though they're kind of wrapped in crap. (laughs) So (laughs) I know we are for one um, grateful that you, you know, we were able to kind of surpass this and now are able to kind of help the world reconnect to their inner selves. And it's something that is so needed. Definitely. Oh, thank you so much. I so appreciate that. And you really said that well, I agree. I think at the time, if you would have told me, I would have been grateful for it. I like wouldn't have enjoyed hearing that, but like now, now that um, I am where I am, I can definitely see it. And it, that stuff just makes you more resilient as well. And just like builds characters that heroes, the warrior's journey, which is a big part of why my name is the playful warrior. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And it's all been an experience in my life too. When I look back and I think some of my most challenging situations, had I chosen to suffer less, had I chosen to trust more and be in that kind of in the present moment, I think I could have gone through a lot of that stuff with ease and grace <laughs> instead of me digging in my heels. But anyways, it's all yeah. part of the journey. So totally hundred percent. Okay. So can we try the shake? What do we yeah. do? Okay. Yes. Yes. So what we're going to do is I'll just tell you first. Um, so you'll just shake around your hips and okay. then your stomach and your chest, your throat, your eyes, your head, and then you'll just shake however you want. The key with this though, that I always say is there's no right or wrong. Like you don't need to follow me how I'm really shaking. Just like move intuitively how 
feels good for you, right? It's never about like how this looks. It's like really getting your body. You can close your eyes if that helps you really get in your body. And I would say if there's anything stressing you out or anything you feel like is not serving you, think about it and consciously just like let it go as you're doing this. Okay. Um, and just like really, so you're like welcoming this energy of like being in the present and you'll feel so much better after okay. So for those of you who are driving, please don't do this while you're driving yeah. or, or <laughs> operating a motor vehicle. <laughs> please pull aside just to be safe. Okay. So let's yeah. Try. Okay. Amazing. Okay. I could put, do you want me to put a song on? Sure. Okay. It's just two minutes. Oh yeah. Okay. That'd be terrific. Thank you. Okay. Let me just get this going. Okay. So I will call things out. So just shake around your hips right now. However feels good. Around your stomach. Yes. Letting go whatever you need to, to your chest. Shaking it out. Yes. To your throat. Yes. Letting go whatever you need to, to your eyes. Amazing. Now to your head, raising the roof if you want. Yes. And now just shaking however you want. You can go down a bit, however you need to. And now it's gonna be a bit faster. To your hips, to your stomach, to your chest, and to your throat. Yes. To your eyes. Yes, letting go your head. Amazing. Now shaking down and getting ready to go a bit faster to your hips and to your stomach and to your chest and to your eyes, your head, raising the roof if you want to, shaking down, back to your hips, your stomach, your chest, your throat, your eyes, your head. Amazing. <laughs> so good. That was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So usually when I do it, it's actually standing, mm -hmm. but because we're like doing this, we're just sitting, but yeah, when you stand into it, you just like have a bit more room to like jump yeah. and whatever, but yeah, that's, it's like a good way to just break up your day. Right. It, it was a lot of fun because I wasn't in the moment. I wasn't thinking about whether I look ridiculous in this camera <laughs> or yeah. whether my hair is a mess. I was just thinking, I was just waiting to listen to what you were saying, right? It yeah, good. it just feels good to kind of loosen up before you start yeah. your day. So good. Thank you so much, Kara, for this opportunity. Please go out and check out the Playful Warrior and try out one of her upcoming programs. And please join us in the future for another episode of the Love and Compassion Podcast with Giselle Treba. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank Kara. You. Thanks so much. This was awesome. Thank you. Okay, Doc. Hold on. Let me just stop recording.